We begin a new Masechta, Masechta Tainis, Be'ezer Hashem Yisbarach, Tav Be'ezer Medalef. Masechta Tainis discusses, like the name of the Masechta, the halachas regarding different fasts that Chachamim instituted. In the most part, these fasts Chachamim instituted was in Eretz Yisrael, when there was no rain in the season of rain, and when it comes towards the end of the season and there won't be any rain, so then in the summer there's not going to be any rain, and it's really, really a big tzara. So they instituted different various stages of fasts and this, as we'll see in the Hemshech of the Masechta. But the Masechta first begins with discussing the union of rain itself, and when in davening do we begin saying, From when do we begin saying in davening, The Mishnah refers to it as the might of rain, and the Gemara will explain why. There's another remez here in the Lashon of the Mishnah that the Taisus Yom Tev says. It says Mazkirin. Why does it say Mazkirin? Not Zoichrin. Mention. Mazkirin sounds like someone is reminding you to do it. So the Rosh here says, and it says this in the Paiskim, that when it comes to time to say Meirad HaGeshem, you can't just say it by yourself. The Gabbai has to announce it for everybody to hear that you say. Otherwise, you're going to say it so that someone else might forget and not say it. You have to announce. And that's the remez of Mazkirin. So when do you mention it? Rabbi Yehazaimer. So this this uh, is for what? This is for Mashu Varuach. Mashu Varuach, Omer Yeah, Mashu look in the Rashi. Only specifically Mashu Varuach. Correct. So when is this? Miyom Tev Harishin Shulchag. It's the first day of Sukkis. Rabbi Shua Omer Rabbi Shua says Miyom Tev Ha'achrin Shulchag. You begin saying Mashu Varuach Omer Degeshem on the last day of the Yom Tev, which is Shmini Yatzeres, like what we do today. So Amalai Rabbi Shua, Rabbi Shua tells Rabbi Yezer, Ho yilvein akshom emelesim in klol b'chag, rain in Sukkis is a sign of a curse. And Rashi brings here the famous Mishnah in Sukkis that says that when it rains in Sukkis, so it's compared to a servant that serves his master water, and the master takes the water and pours it back into his face. So why would we want to mention rain during Sukkis that we're speaking about rain in a time when it's considered to be the opposite of a bracha? So Lamu Maske, why do we mention it now? Amalei Rabbi Liyazeh, so Rabbi Liyazeh answers him, Afani loya marti lisha. I'm not saying to say Vesein Talamotar, which is asking Hashem to actually give the rain. Elo lahaske ma'ashavaruach ha'moyre da'gashem ba'i nasai. I'm just saying to mention ma'ashavaruach ha'moyre da'gashem and it's time. So this is the beginning of the season of the rain, so you're just mentioning about the rain, but you're not asking for the rain to actually come in Sukkis. Amalei, so Rabbi Shua says to him, Simkein, according to what you're saying, you're not asking for the rain, <coughs> Sorry, you're just mentioning the fact that the Ebishter gives rain. So so masker, so lo elam masker. So this you could always mention. You could always mention the fact that the Ebishter gives all rain all year long. Okay, Rabbi Yezer does not answer this question here in the Mishnah, but in the Gemara he will answer it. Zok the Mishnah Vaiter, Ein Shoyelin Asagishomim, you don't ask for rain, El Samloch Lugishomim, only near the time when the season of rain is. Now, exactly what this line in the Mishnah is speaking about, the Gemara will explain. I mean, simply, it sounds like Ein Shoyelin is not talking about Mashavaruach, it's talking about the same Ta'al Omata, when you're actually asking for rain. But we'll see in the Gemara. Rabbi Yehuda, Yemer Rabbi Yehuda says, the one that davens for the Yomid on the last day of Sukkis, which is Shmini Yatzeres. So, Maskir. So, the second person that is the Ha'achrein, the second person that's davening. So, a Maskir, he's the one that mentions Mashav Ruach Amirad Geshem. In other words, that's by Musaf time. Harishain and a Maskir. But the one that's davening Shachres, he does not mention Mashav Ruach Amirad Geshem. The Yomte Farishin Shal Pesach. Then when it comes the first day of Pesach, Harisha in Masker, the one davening Shachris, still says Mashav Ruach HaMere Dagashem. Ha'achra in Ene Masker, the one that davens Musif, does not mention anymore. Zok to Gemara. Tane Heichakoi. The Tane here asks the question, May Emesai. When do you mention it? So what is this Tane going on? Where did we talk about the fact that there's rain and that you have to daven for rain or you have to mention rain in davening? That the Tane is asking when you begin. Zok to Gemara. Again, let's see. Tana heichakoy diktani meimisai. On what is this Tana going? That he asks the question of meimisai. And for the Gemara, Tana hosam koy. This Tana is going back and what we learned over there all the way in the beginning in Mesechta Brachas. 
What does it say in the Sechta Brachas? The Ketani, it says there, Maskirin Gevuris Geshamim, you mentioned Gevuris Geshamim in Davening. Betchiyas HaMesim. In which Brache? In the Brache of Atta Gibar, which is the Brache speaking about Betchiyas HaMesim. And Veshoyalin, you ask for the rain, Bebirchas HaShanim. In the Brache of Baruch Aleinu, when you talk about the Brache of the year. Vahavdole, Chaynen Adas. And Havdole, you say Matzah Shabbos, and Chaynen Adas. So now, that, it mentioned over there the fact that you say the rain in the bracha of Tchiyas HaMesim. So now here the Tana is going back on that and he's asking, so when do you begin actually saying, If it's going back all the way to a Mishnah Mesech the Brachis, so Velisni Hasam. Let it ask the question over there in that Masechta. Why does you leave this subject and wait all the way until here, in the middle of the Mayid, when he already mentioned this in the beginning of the Zrayim and Brachas, and he waits until here? So then what it says, you're right. So, Elo Tane Mirashashana Salik. The Tana over here in Tainus is following Rosh Hashanah. And here you see, Take, that Tainus comes after Rosh Hashanah. That's the Seder of the Masechta. It's not like it's printed, Rosh Hashanah, Sukkah, Yuma, and the new Shasan. But the Seder that Rishayim say, like it says here in the Gemara, is Rosh Hashanah and then Tainus. So, what did it say in Rosh Hashanah? The Tanan it says there in the Mishnah Bechag, Nidoinin Alamayim, that when it comes to Sukkis, that's the time that Abishu judges about the water of the year. So, Vaidi Ditani Bechag Nidoinin Alamayim, because it says it's the time of judgment for the water. So, Tane, so the Tane comes over here and lets you know, Me'emisai Maskirin Gvuris Kishaman. When do we mention about the fact that Abishu gives rain? Fact, the Gemara, now the Gemara wants to know, what does this word Gvuris mean? If you're listening, let it say in the Mishnah, Me'emesai mazkirin ala gishamim. When do we mention about the rain? We say, Mashav ruach, the Ebesha blows the wind, Umayra dagashem. It doesn't say anything about gvurais, so why are we saying gvurais gishamim? My gvurais gishamim. Omer Rabbi Yechenen, Rabbi Yechenen explains, Mipnei sheyoyedin begvura. Because it comes down with the Ebesha's might. Shanemar, it says in the Pasuk regarding rain, Oise gedailois, the Pach here brings the right gears of the Pasuk, Oise gedailois ve'ein cheike neflois. And that Ebishter does great things, and there's no, we can't understand his wonders. And then, but the Postic says afterwards, Ade Mispar, then the following Postic it says, Uksiv, Hanoisin Motor Alpne Oret, the Ebishter gives rain on the face of the earth, Vishaleach Mayim Alpne Chutzais, and he sends the water to flow on the outskirts. So this is the Postic where it speaks about rain. And my, so, okay, so where do you see over here the concept of Gvura? It doesn't say in the Pasuk the word Gvura. So the Gemara asks, my mashma, how do you see over here the concept of Gvura? Rabbi Bashile, so Rabbi Bashile says, Asya cheker, cheker shal oilam. We learn out Exeter Shave, the word Cheker, that it says here, to the word Cheker, that it says when the Abisha creates the world. Over here the Postic says, The Abisha does great things, so it uses the term Cheker. Regarding creation it says, You know, if you didn't hear yet, He creates the extremities of the earth, He doesn't get tired, He doesn't get worn out, we can't understand the Abishta's Tfuna, the Abishta's understanding. And then it says in the Postic, so this is a Postic that it says regarding creation. Uksiv, and then it says in the Postic regarding creation, Meichin Horim Bekoichoi, Nezar Begvura. The Abishta prepares mountain with his might. Nezar Begvura, he girdles himself with, with the, the strength, with Gvura. Okay, so what do we see over here? That regarding creation, it uses the term Cheke. And then it says regarding creation, the term Gvura. So because it says Gvura by creation, and it says Cheke by rain, so we understand that rain also comes from the Abish's Gvura. That's the Gzeir Shava of the Gemara. But this Gzeir Shava is not very clear. As Taisus over here says, it says Gvura here, but it also says Koyach. And it also says by rain, the term Gedula. So maybe we should use the term Koyach Gishamim, or Gedulas Gishamim, what's up is Gvura. Taisus says, in the first shot of Taisus, he says that the term Gvura includes in it both. It includes in it Koyach and Gedula. And then Taisus says, the reason why we use the term Gvura is Gishamim is because the bracha begins with Atta Giber Loilam Hashem, the Gvura of the Evesh and the Indian of Tchiyas Ameisim. So because we say the Indian of rain together with Tchiyas Ameisim, so we say Gvura is Gishamim like the beginning of the bracha. That's what Taisus says. Apichsidis, this Indian of Gvura is Gishamim, I mean, the Mepharshim speak about it. What's the connection? of rain to Gvura. 
Kavura usually means the Eivishter's might that comes out in judgment or in punishment. How is that connected to rain, which is our Shpa of Chesed? So in Chesidus it says that Mikan Raya, that the Shairish of Gvure is not an Indian of judgment or punishment, Adarabe. The Shairish of Gvure is an Indian of Tagbeiris Achayis, that there's a, there's a more stronger Hashpa that comes even higher than Chesed, and therefore it's called Gvure. Adarabe, because Gvure comes from a higher source, so usually when it comes down to the world, there has to be a Tzimtzum in order for the world to be able to handle it. But the Emes, the Shairish of Gvure, is even a higher and stronger Ashpa than Chesed is. And that's the Indian of Gvure is Kishamim. Okay, but the Gemara's first question was Me'emasai. Yes. We're assuming that you have to do it. Correct. And therefore, then the Gemara answers, no, just because the friends are all over there, but doesn't, so, so that takes right. the question of it. That doesn't answer the question anymore. Oh, that's a very good question you're asking. The Ritva asks a question, and the Ritva says that the way to read the Gemara before, it started off with the Gemara of Brachis. That you, it says in the Gemara of Brachis that you have to mention Gevuris Kishamim and Shemayin Esra. Then the Gemara goes to the Gemara in Rosh Hashanah that says Nidainim Alamayim. So the Ritva says the correct shot in the Gemara is it's never completely refuting the fact that this Mishnah is a continuation of Brachis. Elamai, it's adding. If it would have been only a continuation of Brachis, it would have said it in Brachis. Elamai, it waited until it talks about the time when Eivish judges, uh, to talk about when Eivish judges in water, and then it speaks about Me'emesai. But Be'emes, it's a Hemshech from Rosh Hashanah, but it's also a Hemshech of Brachis, because if you want to have the Mishnah in Brachis, we don't even know that you have to mention it in davening. So how do we have to know that you have to mention it in davening? From where do we know that we mentioned the fact that Abishu brings rain in davening? The Tanya, because it says in Abraise, What does it mean to serve Abishu with all of your heart? What's the Avaida with your heart? So this is davening. So that we see here the Pasuk is talking about davening. This is the famous Gemara that says that davening is an Avedi Shebelev. Oksiv Basre, what does it say right after this in the Pasuk? Onasati mitar artzachem, I'll give you the rain, Beita in its time, Yoyre o Malkash, the early rain and the rain that comes late in the season. So because it says right after the Indian of davening, the Indian that Abishu gives rain, so we know that we speak about the rain that Abishu gives in davening. Rabbi Yechenen said, Gimel Mavteichais, the Yoda Shalak Kadish Baruchu. There are three keys that Abishta has in his hands. Shalai Nimsuru, Biyad Shliach. That is not given over to any Shliach, to any agent. There are three different Shatim, what this Gemara means. If you look in Rashi, Rashi here says that it's not given over to one Shliach. There are three different keys here. They're not given over together to the same Shliach. They can be given to different Shluchim, but not one Shliach. Taisvis over here says, and the reason why Rashi is saying this is because Taisvis over here asks the question that we do find that these keys that the Gemara is about to speak about were given over to Elio and to Elisha, the key of rain, the key of Tchis Amesim. And Parnassah the Gemara is going to speak about soon as well, correct? So Taisvis says that when it says over here that these are not given over to Ashliach, what it means is it's not given over to Ashliach that it should be in his hands forever. Could be sometimes, occasionally, Ashliach could have this key. In his hands. Other things are in nature and are given over more permanently in the hands of a shliach, but not these three keys. But there is the Pshat and the Gemara of the Raivid, and the Raivid learns the Pshat and the Gemara Kipshute that these three keys are never given over into the hands of a shliach. And even when you find that Eliyo and Elisha used these kaiches of rain or tchiyas hamesim, they didn't have a key in their hand. They dove into the Eibishter that the Eibishter should bring rain or make tchiyas hamesim. But they, the Eibishter never gives away this mafteach to anybody. So what are these three keys here? Ve'eluhe mafteach shal gishomim, the key for rain, mafteach shal chaya, the key for birth, mafteach shal tchiyas hamesim, and the key of tchiyas hamesim. The key for rain, the chsev yifta Hashem lochas etzari atoyves l'shemayim losas metaart chabita. The Eibushta opens up you as treasure to give you the rain. So the Eibushta does. Then mafteach shochaya, the key for birth, minayin the chsev ayisker lekim es Rachel. The Eibushta remembers Rachel vayishmaela and he heard her. So we see that it's only the Eibushta that he remembers her and vayifta as The pasuk says. In the continuation of Ishmaela, Alakim, Vayiftach Asrachma, the Abishta opens a womb that she should be able to give birth. Mavteyach Shotchiyah Samesim, the key for Tchiyah Samesim, Minayan, how do we know it's in the Abishta's hands? Chsev, the Postic says, Vyidaitem, Kiani Hashem, Bipischi, Eskivre Seichem. You'll know that I am your God when I will open you up, I'll open up your, your burial places. So these the three Mavteyachs are in the Abishta's hand. 
The Marav Amri in Eretz Yisrael, they said, Af Mavteach Shal Parnasa. So too, the key for Parnasa is in the Abish's hands. The Chsiv, Paseach as Yedecha, and Masbiel Chochai Ratzin, it's the Abish that opens his, your hand, or his Abish that opens your hand, or, yeah, and the Abish that gives you the Parnasa that you need. Now, Rabbi Yechenen, my time like a chash of Loha, why doesn't he mention this as well, that the Mavteach of Parnasa is in the Abish's hands? Amalach, he will answer you, Gishamim, Hainu Parnasa. Rain is the same thing as Parnasa. Rain is what provides the ability for all the food to grow, and that's the Parnasa of the entire world. So therefore, it goes together with the rain. Going back to the Mishnah, what did it say in the Mishnah? Rabbi Yazayim, Yom Tavarish Shulchag, that from the first day of Sukkis is when you begin saying, Masha Varuach Amayrida Geshem. The question was asked, why did Rabbi Yezah say from the first day of Sukkot? Rabbi Yezah, Mehecha Gomerla. From what is he learning it out? In other words, what is he comparing it to? Milulav Gomerla. Is he comparing it to the Lulav? As the Gemara is soon going to say, the Lulav grows from water. And the reason for the mitzvah of Lulav is also connected to the fact that on Sukkot we're being judged on water. So he's learning it out from Lulav. Oymen Yisachamayim Gomerla. Or he's comparing it, he's learning it from the mitzvah of Nisach of pouring the water on the Mizbeach that started the first day of Sukkot. So the Gemara now explains what the difference would be. Milulav Gamala, is he learning it from Lulav? Ma Lulav Bayoim, just like the mitzvah of Lulav is only by day. Afaskara Bayoim. So, so too, according to Rabbi Yezer, you begin saying Ma Shavruach Amir Degeshem by day, not from the night before. Or you learns it out from the pouring of the water on the Mizbeach. And just like the pouring of the water is from the night before. the Because the Master said, The Mincha and the Nesachim that you pour in the Mizbeach are filled by Laila. That can be done even at night. So af has me So so too you mention mashavruach amayr dageshem already from the night before. So the atub shatim here in this gemara in Rashi here, what it means when it says that you can pour the water the nesachim from at night. Usually the time that you pour the nesachim is by the tamed shal shacha in the morning by day, not at night. So one shot in Rashi, he's actually not good. It's this whole thing about the Omar Mar, when it brings the Pasuk and Mechassim V'neskeim. And Rashi says, when it says that the water is at night, it's referring to drawing the water. They would draw the water the night before. But another Pshat Rashi says that Um Mechassim V'neskeim, you learn out from there, that true, the right time of Chathchil is to pour the water by day, but if you didn't get a chance, or B'diyevet, if you poured it the night before, then you could, be, you could do the mitzvah even by pouring it the night before. And therefore the Gemara says that you would mention Masha Varuach HaMeir HaGashem from the night before already. That means you, even though you didn't read the carbon. Correct, even though you didn't read the carbon yet. You're pre-doing it before the carbon is brought, correct? Toshima, so the Gemara answers this. Shaila, Adomer, Abavo, Abavo said, Leilamda Rabbi Yezer, Elam Yilulav. Rabbi Yezer, now Mishneh, learned that the fact that he said Masha Varuach HaMeir HaGashem the first, the first day of Sukkis, he learns it from Lulav. Now, how did Rabavo know this? Ikidomri Rabavo Gemara Gomila. Some say Rabavo had this as a tradition. This is what he was taught from his Rebbe. Ikidomri, others say Masnita Shmiele. Rabavo learned this in a Braisa. Maihi, what is this Braisa where it says this? The Tanya, we learned in a Braisa as follows. And here's this Braisa, it's going to bring the source of the Machlaikis, Rabbi Yezah, and Rabbi Yeshua with more details and with additional opinions regarding this whole halacha. So it says in the Braise, the Tanya me emesai maskirin ala geshomim. When do you begin mentioning about the rain in Davani? Rabbi Yazoi me mishas netilas lulav, from the day that you take the lulav, the first day of Sukkis. Rabbi Yeshua me mishas hanachosai, from the time when after you put away the lulav, which is on the last day of Sukkis, the seventh day of Sukkis, so then the next day on Shmini Yatzeres is when you say mashavaruach, like it said in our Mishnah, the Machlaikis. Now, Amr Rabbi Eliezer, Rabbi Eliezer says, Hoyil varba saminin alolu einan bon alolaratze salamayim. The reason for the mitzvah, why dal minim is dafka on sukkis, is because it's coming to appease the Eibishter for the water that the Eibishter is going to provide for the following year. Ukeshem sha'arba minin alolu yevshe ben beloi mayim. These four minim, they cannot grow without any water. So kach yevshe loilam beloi mayim. So too the world cannot survive without any water. So therefore, this is the appropriate time, the first day of Sukkot, when you start taking, when you take the Dal Minim, that's when you should mention about the rain. I'm going to let Rabbi Yeshua, but Rabbi Yeshua answers to this, but Rain in Sukkot is a bad sign, so why should you say, 
But Rabbi Yezer, so Rabbi Yezer answers, I didn't say that you should begin davening and asking for the rain. You mentioned the rain. Just like regarding Tchiyas HaMesim, this is something that we mention all year. Even though Tchiyas HaMesim is only going to happen in a specific time. But nevertheless, we mention it every day. So too, we mention Gevuras Gishamim the entire year. Even though there is the specific time period when the rain is needed, but nevertheless, we can mention rain the entire year. And therefore, he says, According to Rabbi Leezer, if someone wants to say, any day of the year, you can say, There's the time when you're supposed to mention it, which is in the winter time, in the season of rain, but you're allowed to mention it any day of the year, because you're not asking for the rain, you're just mentioning the rain. So this is Rabbi Leezer's answer to the question, why don't you say it all year round? His answer is, yeah, you could. You talk, I could say it all year round. You started with Rabbi Bo. Yeah, yeah, Rabbi, this is the Gemara is bringing over here, the Braise that was the source for what Rabbi Vo said. So this is the Braise. Now the Braise continues, Rabbi, Oimer, Rabbi says, Oimer, Ani, I say, no, you can't mention Masha Veruach, Mer, the Geshem all year. The same time that you stop asking for the rain, when you stop saying the same Talamota, Kach Mafzik So too, you stop mentioning the rain as well. In other words, like we do today, the first day of Pesach, you stop saying the same Saint Talamota, and you also stop saying Masha Veruach. Another opinion regarding when you start saying On the second day of Sukkot, when is when you begin saying says On the sixth day of Sukkot is when you mention That's when you start saying Rabbi Yehuda, Mishum Rabbi Yeshua, Rabbi Yehuda says in the name of Rabbi Yeshua, Ha'evel of Ne'ateve, B'yom Tov Ha'achron Shulchag, the one that goes to Daven on the last day of Yom Tov. So Ha'achron, the second person, in other words, the one Davening Musaf, Masker, he's the one that says, Ma'ashavruah Ha'amayr Degeshem. Ha'rishon, Eina Masker, the one that Davens Shachris does not say, Ma'ashavruah Ha'amayr Degeshem. So Tosis over here brings from the Yerushalmi that the reason why you don't say Mashav Ruach Amir Degeshem from the night before is because not everybody comes to Shul at night, especially those times, it's hard to go out at night. So not everybody's in Shul at night, so they're not going to necessarily know that they started saying Mashav Ruach Amir Degeshem. Then the Yerushalmi says, no, so why don't you say it in Shachris in the morning? Because if you're going to say it Shachris in the morning, people are going to think, oh, if they're saying it Shachris, they probably said it last, t- last night by Mairev already. So they're not going to realize, no, that they did not say it last night. So therefore you say it by Musif, so people will know that this is the day you have to start, and everyone is there already by Musif, and they'll know when to start. Okay, Vaita the Braise says, like we had in the Mishnah, that beyond the Rishon Shal Pesach, in the first day of Pesach, Harishain, the one davening Shachres, Maske, still says, Mashav Ruach HaMer Degeshem, Ha'achren in a Maske, the one that davens Musif, does not anymore say, Mashav Ruach HaMer Degeshem. This is the end of the Braise. Now there we had a few opinions here, opinions here in the Braise regarding when you start saying Mashav Ruach Amir the Geshem, the second day, the sixth day, and so on. The Gemara is going to explain it. We'll see. We'll see the Metshem tomorrow. Okay, but now the Gemara asks, says as follows: Shapir Ka'omalei Rabbi Yezer Rabbi Shua. Rabbi Yezer, he responded to Rabbi Shua. Rabbi Shua asked him, why are you saying that it's compared to Tchiyas Amesim, that you can say it all the time? So, so he, he, Rabbi Shur told him, so you should, you should say it every day. So what did Rabbi, Rabbi Leza answer today, to that? Yeah, you're right. You could say it every day. There's no problem to say it every day. I'm not asking for the rain. I'm just mentioning the rain. And I could say it every day, just like Tchiyas Mason. No, so the Gemara says, that's a good answer, Rabbi Leza said. So now, Amalach Rabbi Shur, Rabbi Shur will answer back to that. No, you can't compare it to Tchiyas Mason. Yes, it's well understood when it comes to Tchiyas HaMesim that we mention it every day. Tchiyas HaMesim, it's the right time for Tchiyas HaMesim every single day. Even though it's only going to happen in one specific time, but every day is the time when Tchiyas HaMesim should happen. But El Gishomim, however, when it comes to rain, Kolem is the Asian, Zimnayuhi, anytime it's going to rain, it's a good time for the rain. 
There's a season for the rain. There's a time when it's good to have rain, but then there's a time when rain is actually negative. Because Vatsnan, we learned in the Mishnah, Yotza Nisan Viyardu Gishamim. If the, the Kufa of Nisan already passed, and now the rain is still, it's still raining, Simiklale, it's, it's a sign of a, of a curse. Shanama, there's a Pasuk that says, This is a day of cutting the wheat, and the Pasuk that continues to say that. The Abish says, Ekral Hashem, Vayitin Kailus and Matar. If the Abish is going to give rain on this day, it's actually a sign that the Abish is punishing you when he brings rain in such a time period. So therefore, we see that the rain is not all year round. So therefore, we talk about Paskin like Rabbi Yezek, we Paskin like Rabbi Shua, that you only mention Mashav Ruach and Mayra Dageshem in the season, in the winter, when you need rain, in the times when you don't need rain, we don't mention anything about the rain. Okay, in the continuation of the Gemara, it's going to continue regarding the other opinions that say that you start on the second day of Sukkot or the sixth day of Sukkot, as we'll see in Mitzvah Shem tomorrow. Yeah, but, uh, but, uh,